Previously on Dream oh. Team. Jackie, your wife's abdominal pain was caused by an ectopic rupture. She's pregnant. Was. Is anybody going to do the right thing and own up to this? Bobby, how long to set up a drugs test? Jeff Stein, agent. Let's do lunch tomorrow on me. You tested positive for cocaine. You spot my drink. Who? The gaffer. To the dragon of the year. You expect me to believe that Patrick Doyle spiked your drink with cocaine just to get you off the team? Oh, no, I know, I know what it looks like. I'm sorry, I lost your baby. You mean our baby? Are you sure? I saw them together, Jackie and Patrick. Is it really true? Yeah. No, I'm implicated as well. You told me there were others on his side. There must be someone you can trust. But I owe Patrick Doyle my career. With him, I have won the championnat and two cups. And you accuse him of betting on the team to go down? Yes. And of having an affair with Mrs. Wallace? Yes. And of feeding you drugs? Look, I know it sounds mental, but think about everything that's gone on. Huh? Selling Monday, Scotty Lucas, and a Mendoza thing, for God's sakes. You said it yourself, why do we keep losing? Even if this is true, why are you telling me? Because I can't play. I can't do anything to stop him, but maybe you can. Look, um, it's late. We'll have training in the morning, and, um, I need time to think. Yeah, but you do believe me, though, didn't you? Yeah. Let's talk again in the morning. Look, I know it's a lot for you to take in. I know it sounds crazy. I mean, when I first told Abby, she... Please. You must just let me think. Yeah, but I... Good night, Carl. Wait. Well? He says he wants time to think. You left him on his own? Well, what's the problem? I told him everything straight. Did he believe you? Well, I don't know. I mean, you can't expect a geezer to... <sighs> I knew it. I knew I should have gone with you. You know what he'll have done, don't you? Patrick. Can I put a call through? I'd like to put a call through to Patrick Doyle's room, please. Look, I didn't think. You never do. I'm sorry, but the line's engaged. The number's busy. Hi, Patrick. I'm sorry to call so late, but I really need to discuss something with you. Come in. So now you are kidnapping me. You're going to talk to Patrick. I wanted to talk to him, that's all. I just can't believe oh, that. For God's sakes! Look, Carl, why don't you get us some drinks? Please, sit down. Look, I completely understand what you're feeling. When Carl told me, I thought he'd finally lost it. But then I saw it for myself. And they are lovers, I promise you. If that part is true, then why not the rest? All we're asking right now is don't go to Patrick. Please, mate. Why me? Why must I be the one to have my head filled with this madness? Because you're the one who's always saying how much he hates to lose. I figured you couldn't be in on it. Me and my big mouth. Look, Carl has carried this on his own for long enough. He needs someone else to advise him. And who better than his own captain? You want my advice? Tell the chairman. Let him sort it out. But it's our word against theirs. Why would he believe us? Well, then, you must persuade Mrs. Wallace to tell her husband. What's a man have to do to get a decent breakfast round here? Well, maybe he could go back to his own house and eat there for a change, eh? but he might as well do daddy's for you. Sorry, sweetheart. Come back to Carl. I've told them I'll get the money. I've got a bit of a cash flow problem. Just give me till the end of the week. Sorry, mate. Are you sure you're going to be all right? Yeah, that's the fifth time that you've asked me that. I'm fine. I know. I'm just worried about you. Okay, bye. Bye. Listen, Princess, can I borrow your beamer? 
Oh, sorry, Dad. No, I'll go to Brighton later. Anyway, what's wrong with your car? A uh, bloke at the door, he's taking it away for a service. Listen, you, you can't go to Brighton. You have to help me close the deal with Clive Connolly and Bobby Thompson. Well, what do you need me for? I told you, Connolly took a shine to you. I promise Robbie, Dad. Listen, if you really must leave me for that boy, the least you can do is help me out on this one before you go. <sighs> Thank you. Patrick, it's me again. I need to see you. Please call me back. From uh, me and the lads. Condolences for, uh, you know, what happened. Can I come in? Look, I'm not really in the mood for visitors, OK? Look, can you give me five minutes? Is it that you want? You've got to tell the chairman about the bet. I really can't cope with this right now. Yeah, well, it's got to be now. If we lose to Birmingham tomorrow, a couple more defeats and that's it. We're relegated. Don't you understand what that means? Think about Phil. I can't stop thinking about Phil. Have you any idea what this would do to him if he found out? But it's way worse. He's got to go through every single defeat blaming himself. At least if he knew. I can't tell him. How can you stand to make money out of this misery? You're ruining my life, my wife's, the players, the fans who come and watch us every week. For God's sake, do the right thing. Tell your husband. Tell your husband what? Um, Carl bought this. Um, he wanted you to know just how sorry the players were. Yeah. The man of the match champagne. That's a really nice thought, Fletch. Thank you. Yeah, it's the least we could do. See ya. All right, mate. You all right? Marcel. Abby. Uh, Sometimes I like to have a massage before training, and um, Abby came to the hotel early. Oh. So what did you want to talk to me about last night? I'll see you inside. Uh, but several have been in touch, and uh, they want to take me alone for the rest of the season, and um, maybe to sign me properly next summer. It's an orthodox. Approaching the player before the club. I, I know. That, that's why I wanted you to hear it from me. Quite. Well, of course, the chairman will never allow it, not when we're fighting relegation. A bit of a quick chat with Louis van Gaal to explain the situation. No, thank you, but uh, my agent's taking care of it. There you go. OK. I got halfway out of the house and I thought to myself, what the hell am I doing leaving my wife when she needs me? I think the club can manage without me for a couple of days. We will get through this. I promise. Look, it's not doing you any good being cooped up inside this house all day, is it? Why don't we go away somewhere? I don't want to lie on a beach all day thinking about it. I just want to go back to work. But you've only been at a hospital five minutes. <laughs> it's what I want, Phil. Please don't fuss. Gather around. Now, anybody who has lived in this part of the world for more than five minutes knows how important Saturday's game is. And with Ryan going back to his old club and our fans having waited to beat Birmingham in the league for 20 years, the atmosphere is going to be extraordinary. And we have never needed a win more than we need one now. Yeah, you're damn right. With Stuart and Fletch missing, 
we're going to play a 4-5-1 formation with Curtis as the sole man up front. Sitting back with ten men behind the ball. If we don't concede, we can't lose. But they'll just keep coming at us. Exactly. We play them on the counter. And I need someone with the physical presence to replace Stuart in central defence. What do you think? Me? Well, I've never played in defence in my life. I honestly believe that you can lead us from the back. And it's vital that we have some defence for Jamie. Well, we do need some height at the back. So, right, come on, let's see you in action. He's having a laugh. Mrs Wallace. Oh, we uh, weren't expecting you back so soon. How could I stay away from this place? If there's anything we can do... The best thing would be just not to treat me like an invalid. I just want to get on. We've got some features to organise for the Birmingham game. And I want to go down to the training ground. Most of it's already done. I think that I should probably go down there anyway. Well, I'll go with you. I told you. Don't fuss. What on <clears throat> earth are you doing? I'm trying to sweat the coke out. You won't be clean by Saturday. Yeah, no, I know, but I might make it back by the cup, babe. <sighs> what happened with Jackie? She ain't having none of it. But did you explain what we said? Yeah, of course I did. Well, then what are we going to do? Standing by the door would be a start. Thank you. Come for an interview. Carl Fletcher came to see me this morning. Social call? Begging me to tell Phil everything. Well, obviously not going to. Well, I have to do something. Being stuck in that house with Phil. It's like slowly being suffocated. Constantly asking me if I'm all right. Grieving for a child that isn't even his. Have you any idea what that's like? Jackie. It's got to stop. All of it. I cannot stand seeing the pain. Every day being reminded of something that I've done. Ruining the careers and lives of everybody around me. I can't go with it anymore. I can't stand it anymore. I'm oh, sorry I had to do that. But you really do need to calm down. Hey, she won't play ball. Sorry. Look, um, how's training? He's playing me Santa Barbara, Birmingham. What? We need someone to replace Stuart. But I can't work it out if he, he wants to win or to lose. Oh, I think I've got some idea. I wish you never told me, mate. I can't think about anything else. It's just... Oh, Marcy, Marcy, look. <laughs> I know you ain't been with a bird for a while, but she is pig ugly. These Frenchies, eh, Gaffer? They've got no taste. I just wanted to check that you're all right about playing defence tomorrow. I don't want to be at odds with my captain. You're the boss. Indeed. Listen, I wanted to chat about this Barcelona thing. Well, Marcel said you were dealing with it. You know of no interest from Barcelona. Huh? Must have misunderstood the lad. Sorry to have bothered you. Bye. All I'm saying is, yeah. All I'm saying is that just because we've got one up front, it doesn't mean that we have to be negative. Because loads of teams play that way. Isn't it? Oh, that's true. Money nice in Europe. Oh, no, I know you're not saying that Curtis is as good as Van Nistelrooy. And they all play David Beckham as centre back, do they? Mm. Come in, Captain. What? Are you with us or what, mate? <laughs> Look, the gaffer knows what he's doing. You're just annoyed because you've got to do that much more running. Shut up. Ooh, Jay, man. When does your divorce come through? Because I'm counting those minutes. I don't think she's into children. You all right? Yeah, not bad. You? Yeah, I'm getting by. Uh, do you want to a bit of lunch? I'm actually going to see Clyde and Tom. Thanks. <sighs> I know you two are um, busy in demand, young men. I just want a couple of hours to discuss a few things. Nothing too heavy, just a nice civilised lunch. On me. That's if you're free, of course. Sure. <laughs> Thought you said she wasn't into children. <laughs> Jackie, I'm looking everywhere for you. 
This is Darren Kersley. Won the competition for the Birmingham game. Really on the one for HUTV. And this is his mother, Kate. Are you okay? Not really. Um, just give us a sec, yeah? Sure. I'm sorry. Darren looks to spit at me when I was a kid. I didn't think. Chateau Margot. You chose it, son. Try the goods. Um, yeah, that's lovely. Cheers. Finding an agent who knows what he's doing, well, it's a tricky business. That's why you're lucky we have such a close relationship with United. Me and the chairman and your gaffer, well, we're like that. Now, things like that really count when you're discussing numbers. Well, uh, cheers then, lads. Cheers. Mr. Sabatier, the very man. Patrick. I'm doing a Sky Sports interview this afternoon. It would really help me out if you could join me. Uh, what about? Oh, it's the build-up to the match, you know, the sort of thing. But it'd be great in a derby game like this if we could present a United front yet manager and captain. OK. Do I have time to freshen up? Yeah. OK. Now you're hitting a big time, you'll be looking for big time representation. That's where myself and Natasha can help. Not only will we tie up all aspects on the footballing side, but we'll maximise your earning potential with boot deals, commercials, all manner of lucrative money-spinning projects. If you like, I could take the liberty of putting it down in writing so as to make it official. Probably you want your parents to have a look. Uh, yeah, yeah, my dad won't let me sign anything without him seeing it first. Ah, Clyde, he sounds like a man after my own art. Are you encouraging my players to have a drink the day before a game? Patrick, I can assure you... If you ever do anything so stupid again, I'll have you barred from the club altogether. Managers, eh? I'm here with six-year-old Darren Kersley, winner of our Who's Your Hero competition. The prize, of course, was free tickets to Saturday's derby against Birmingham. This game splits Darren's family right down the middle. His father's a city supporter, but Darren, who is it that you'll be cheering for at St Andrews? Me and my mum support the Dragons! <laughs> and how long have you been a Harchester fan? All my life. And what is it about the way they play that you like? I don't like it. Oh. It was good last year in the UEFA Cup. Mummy took me to Shelbourne. Now they just lose all the time. I think that we should just leave that for a minute. I'm sorry about that, but it's not easy for him with all these defeats. You know, he started getting mystery illnesses every Monday. I talked to his teacher and it turns out every time Harchester lost, well, the other lads teased him so badly he was faking being sick to get out of dealing with it. Marcel's going to do the interview with me. Will that be all right? Yeah, absolutely. The more the merrier. Good to have you with us. All right. We're going to do the interview just up there, so if you want to get yourself mic'd up. Yeah. OK, thanks. Uh, Roger. Yeah. Whatever you've heard, please don't push it about Marcel going to Barcelona. Right. The club's had enough bad news without discovering that his captain's on the verge of leaving. OK. Uh, we better get a move on. I think we've already annoyed the gaffer enough for one day, haven't we? Yeah. OK, boys, well, we'll see you after the game tomorrow, yeah? Uh, will your parents be there? Cos we can go through the standard contract after a good victory. Uh, yeah, my, my parents are in Nottingham and it's like two changes on the train, so... Mm, well, we'll send a limo for them. Hey. Sweet, nice one. Well, that's the kind of service you get with us, you see. And yours, Tomo. All the way from Toxteth? Uh-huh. Thanks, Mr Stone. Um, uh, see ya. <sighs> see ya. Deb, what's wrong? What do you mean? You're all edgy and down, and you're frantic to sign these two kids. I'm drumming up new business. It's what I do, remember? Only now they're sure deserting me for Brighton and lover boy Walsh. I've got to do it on my own. So excuse me if I'm not a barrel of laughs, OK? We're coming to you live on the eve of an important local derby. It's nearly two decades since Harchester United last played neighbours Birmingham City in the league. And I'm joined by two men who are sure to be key figures in tomorrow's game. Dragons manager Patrick Doyle and captain Marcel Sabatier. Now, gentlemen, it's a massive game, local pride at stake, and it's also a relegation six-pointer. How do Harchester find themselves in this predicament? Um, well, uh, we have had some problems. Such as? 
we have had some good performances, but also some bad ones. So we are not always, um, uh, come on, dear. Consistent, I think, is the word that Marcel's looking for. Yeah, sorry, my English is still not so good. So, have you been disappointed with how your move from Paris has worked out? No. So, why are you talking to Barcelona? Um, I, I get a lot of approaches from clubs, so um, it's nothing unusual. I don't think that situation should be discussed the day before a derby game. But you would like a move to the new Camp? Um, Barcelona is a great club. Any player would like to play for them, but um, I'm also happy to be here. Gentlemen, thank you very much and good luck tomorrow at St Andrews. Thank you. Leaky business, football. The fans will crucify me, Patrick. Just concentrate on your game. And what is it about the way they play that you like? I don't like it. Oh. Good last year, Sounds familiar. It's always harder when you're that age. I remember once we lost 7 0 to Villa. I stayed in my room and cried all week. Let's hope we don't break his heart tomorrow, eh? I've got to hand this tape over to Tara to edit. I'm going to go out for a bit. Okay, well, I'll get your car. No, I've got my own car. Anyway, I've got some stuff to get in town. It'd do me good to get. Oh, in the fresh air. All right. We'll just make us sure you're home by seven, yeah? Why? You'll see. You told Patrick, didn't you? Made him organise your nice little trip to Barcelona. Talk about rats and sinking ships. He wanted to know what I was going to see him about last night. I had to tell him something. So I said Barcelona had been in touch. And are they? Pedro? You think I'd be here talking to you if Barcelona wanted me? Then he makes me go in this interview and sues me up. Stitches. Stitches. Whatever. He knows I know. Why did you tell me? Last night this man was my friend. Now he's... If we can't tell the chairman, we must go to your football association. Do you think I haven't thought of that? We tell him we get relegated anyway. At least people we know it's not our fault. And we can't find new clubs in the Listen. summer. Listen, I've sweated blood for Hartish tonight nearly my whole career. I ain't gonna see him in a nationwide. Do you understand me? Look, arguing is getting us nowhere. There must be something we can do. Yeah, there is. Win. I don't know why I agreed to come. Well, I'm glad you have. Want a drink? Come on, relax. I can't do this anymore. My husband's expecting me home. The players are gonna be here any minute. You used to like the danger. Well, I don't anymore, okay? So I know you're finding things mm, difficult at the moment, but I'm under pressure as well. What? Pressure to make a fortune? No. From the people I placed the bet with. These aren't high street bookies, you know. So we can't just fold up our cards and walk away because I haven't the first idea of what it is they'd do to us if we did. I just need you to hang on tight for a little longer. I mean, if we lose tomorrow, we're going to be this close to achieving everything we set out to do then it'll all be over. There'll be another season, promotion, and millions of pounds. We're almost there. Are you with me? Good girl. Look, you sure you're up for this? Yes, I should have been at the Grand Hotel half an hour ago. Okay, but you've got to persuade them without giving anything away. Just football reasons. Not even a whisper of anything else. I know. Look, maybe I should go with him. No. You're not playing. There is no reason for you to be at the team hotel. Okay. But call me as soon as you've done it, all right? I will. All right. Well, good luck. It'll be okay. No, no. Hmm? Ryan Chino. Clyde Tomo. Jamie and Curtis. You know, if we had a roommate called Lee, we could be Jamie Lee, Curtis. <laughs> Keepers. Well, he made Julio Iglesias himself. Listen, boys, um, after dinner meeting in my room. What is it you're leaving, Barney? Card game. Card game? You want that money before you jump ship. Nice touch. I want the chance to explain to you. I don't gamble. Playing. Come anyway, I'm trying to build team spirit before the game tomorrow. Yeah, yeah? Of course. Everything all right? Yeah. Shall we go into dinner then? Hey. Oh, I'm sorry, I lost track of time. It's okay. 
Ready for your surprise? Yes. Well, close your eyes then. They're closed? Yeah. Okay. This way. Okay, keep them closed. And open them. Oh my god. Do you know what today is? It's the anniversary of the first day we went out together. I took you to Marinelli's, remember? Well, I wanted to take you back there, but um, unfortunately they've closed down, so... Uh... You remember Luigi? Welcome to the new Marinelli's, Mrs. Wallace. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. You didn't tell your father about our meeting. Tomas, where's the cars at? We're not playing cars. Well, so this is your leaving party then? No. Listen, I promise the Barcelona story is a complete lie. I'm not leaving Harchester. Well, I thought I had a shot of being captured. <laughs> <laughs> so what's all this then, Moss? This is about us and the tactics we use in the game tomorrow. Do you know, it took me months to find the courage to uh, ask you on that first date. I never thought that you were going to. Well, you know, I wanted to. It's a bit of a disaster, though, you spilling all that wine over me. <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget that woman's face when she walked into the ladies, and uh, there we both were, your skirt half off underneath the tap. <laughs> you know, if I could go back and rip up that lottery ticket, how would you know? I thought that extra money would make us happier. But it hasn't. I was so obsessed by running a football club that I didn't even realise my own wife was pregnant. <laughs> it must have been so lonely and frightened when you lost the baby, Jack. And I didn't even notice. I'm sorry. Please, Phil, don't. Do you think we can go back to the way we were? Or has the money ruined everything? Now, let me get this straight. The Gapper wants us to play one way, and you want us to go out there tomorrow and do something completely different. I want us to play to win. Are you telling me that's wrong? Of course I don't agree with it. But the simple fact is it's the manager's job to tell us how to play. And our job to do it. Look, we have to take things into our own hands before it is too late. If we get relegated, it will be our fault, the players. And it will follow us around all our career. What do you suggest? You play up front with Curtis? Exactly. How do we know your way is better than the gaffers? Goals win games. Jay? Well, I've got to save goals whatever, but, you know, it's more about you lot. It is a risk, you know? Curtis, come on. Trust me. Look, man, I'm going back to my old club. I don't need this in my life right now. I've only just got in the team. OK. First half, we play the gaffers' way. If it's working, no problem. We carry on. If it is not, we change things and we go for it. Do you have an agreement? I mean... Alright. Alright. Yeah. Me too. You already know I'm in. <laughs> well, come on, Jackie. The traffic's gonna be murder. To be honest, I don't really feel up to the game. I think it's best if I just stay here. Oh. Okay. I'll stay with you then. No, you can't. How long have you been looking forward to this match? I know, but... I'll be fine. Anyway, you've got to stay and look after little Darren. Well, I've got my lucky shirt on. Well, wish me luck then. Mm. 
that's a lot of luck. You know that I love you, don't you? Yeah. I'm sorry that I haven't been the best wife. But what are you on about? I feel you're already special. I'll never meet another man like you. Just so you know. I should go to Birmingham more often. Are you sure you're going to be all right? Yeah. I feel. A vital match for both clubs at St Andrews and defeat today for Harchester and they are back in the relegation zone. Oh, I think they're going to do really well. We're going to win. Birmingham 2, Harchester 0. Thank you very much. Birmingham 5, Harchester 0! Harchester lifted the gloom a little last week with that victory over Sunderland, but really searching for the consistency which will get themselves away from the bottom of the Premiership table. The stakes couldn't be higher. Marcel, would this be your last game for Harchester? No, I just want to try to... Just a small. Just walk. Just walk. Welcome to St Andrews. It's good to have you here after so many years. Yeah, it's good to be here. Um, there's a young boy, Darren, who's here to see you. I've put him in the players' lounge. Thanks. I'm not nervous. <laughs> well, may the best team win. Should we go and see him? Yeah. Yeah, come on, I'll take you through. Is everyone OK? Yeah, sweet skipper. Remember, we are here to win. Focus. What's that? Someone died? Just a bit nervous, Gaff. Don't worry. I'm sure all of you will do me proud this afternoon. How's my captain? Fine, boss. Excellent. Excuse me. Can I say it's a real pleasure to meet you all. Your sons have told me so much about you. There you go. All named and numbered. Thank you. I don't mean to be rude, but who are you? I'm Jeff Stein. I'm the one who sent the cars for you. Clyde said that was the club. It's true, I've got a good relationship with the club. I'm not on the staff, but some of my lads might say so. Uh, let's get some drinks, yeah? Hmm. I thought you were going to the match. Something came up. And you're doing a runner? clubs in the top flight for 20 years. Conditions nigh on perfect, but a lot of pressure on Patrick Doyle and his team today. And the lineup from Doyle is very defensive. No Stuart Naismith in defence. Carl Fletcher is injured, so Alexander plays as the lone striker. Steve Bruce can call upon Christophe Dugarry today, one of his recent clutch of new signings. Not a good uh, reception for Marcel Sabatier. Rumours he may be on his way to Barcelona or indeed for Ryan Naismith from the Birmingham fans. He, of course, an ex-player here at St Andrews. Paul Durkin is our match referee and it's Birmingham City who kick off. Such a coward. What would you do? Tell my husband the truth? I can't. It would destroy him. You leave now and your marriage ends today. My marriage ended the moment that I placed that bet. This way it's better for Phil. What about the club? The club's going down. There's nothing you, me or anybody else can do about that. There must be. No. It's over. Here's Kenny Cunningham. Just to have rather been on the back foot in the opening minutes here. Savage making the run forward. I wish you were playing. <laughs> yes, so do I. Yeah, I think we all do. But why are they playing so deep? Birmingham getting a lot of joy down this uh, left flank in the opening minutes. It's a decent ball in as well. Savage arriving and Sabatier oh, with a clearing header for the corner. 
and it's been all Steve Bruce's side so far. Robbie Savage has been instrumental in midfield for the home team. Manchester well up against him in this derby match. Birmingham working the corner short. Played in towards Devlin with the shot. Oh, it's a beauty. Birmingham City in front. And in all honesty, it doesn't flatter them against a very negative Harchester. Sabatier and the rest of the defence gave Jamie Parker, the Harchester goalkeeper, little or no cover. Doyle disappointed. That's all we need. again here and Harchester having to work hard to keep it 1-0 Cissé this time it's routine for Jimmy Parker Harchester will really have to do something about the balance of the team at half time you feel here's Morrison with a snapshot again the marking was somewhat approximate there from Harchester front two linking well here Morrison and John and the half time whistle arrives and not before time for Patrick Doyle. Harchester have been all over the place in the first half. Paul Devlin with the only goal. And in truth, it could have been much, much worse for Harchester. Birmingham City have been well on top and lead at half-time 1-0. It's been all here today, Anthony, as Harchester have been a shambles in the first half. Thanks, mate, for such negative tactics by Patrick Doyle. So, uh, maybe I should take this chance to explain a few things, how my business runs and all that. This is my daughter, Natasha. She runs the PR side, promotions, that kind of thing. Excuse us a minute. Dad, do you want to lay off them for a minute? They've just seen their sons played off the park. The last thing they want... Don't tell me how to run my business. I know what I'm doing, OK? Yes, I'm just saying... Well, don't! <sighs> yes, they're a goal ahead. But we are looking dangerous on the counter. They're going to press us in the second half, but if you go on playing the way you've been playing, the equaliser will come. Listen, lads. Now is the time. We have to go out there and play the way we know we can to win. You all know your jobs for the second half. It's up to us and only us to win this game. Let's go out there and get three points. Well said, Marcel. Come on, lads! Come on! I'm worried I've got a good feeling about the second half. Yeah? Yeah, we're going to push Marcel up front. They won't know what hit him. Mrs. Wallace! What are you doing here? I couldn't stand to miss it. We're going to win now. Do you know what? I think we will. I'm going to place a bet. What do you reckon, Darren? 2 1, Marcel to score. 2 1, it is. Nice of you to come. We have to go out now. <laughs> Excuse me, we should be taking our seats. Very good. Shall we go? Yeah. Okay. Go on. Thank you. Thank you. What the hell's he doing here acting like their new best friend? Who? That's Bobby Bell, PFA rep. If he's planning on stealing him from under our nose. Oh shh, Dad, don't make a fuss. We'll sort it out after the game, okay? Come on. Manchester with much to do then in the second half, but it is a more attacking lineup. Sabatier now in attack alongside Alexander. Yes, Marcel's playing up front. You're right, mate. Certainly Sabatier now in his favourite position. Can Harchester become an attacking force for the first time today in this derby? They've got plenty forward here. Chance for Sabatier to get the cross in, and that's a lot better. Bobby, I want to work. No, now. How dare you prey on my clients? Pardon? Bobby Thompson and Clyde Connolly. But they're not your clients, are they? Well, I may not have signed on the dotted line. Jeff, the PFA signed them about two weeks ago. What? I'm sorry. The boys should have told you. Come on, come on. That's it, huh? Here's Peter Mack. Chance to get his cross in, and the appealing cross side, onside, Connolly denied by Vassen. Oh, an important save there by Nico Vassen to deny Connolly. That 
Patrick Doyle knows this is better, but suddenly caught at the other end immediately. Harchester, Savage with the ball in, Devlin with a shot. And still, Harchester, you have to say, looking somewhat unbalanced at times in this game. And you can see from that picture that the players are at odds with one another here. Dad. Dad, are you right? I wasted over two grand on those boys, and they've already been signed up. What? Well, why didn't they tell you? Well, look, they've only just broken into the first team anyway, Dad. You're probably better off concentrating on more established players, eh? You don't understand. They were my last throw at a dice. I think I'm going bankrupt, Princess. Birmingham press again. Sabatier easily bypassed, and Johnson! Oh, another fine Birmingham goal! It's 2-0 for Birmingham City in the derby. And Harchester were all over the place. The captain, Sabatier, arguing furiously with Ryan Neesmith. And Harchester have a mountain to climb now. Smith getting ready to come on. It looks like Sabatier. Yes, it is. Marcel Sabatier is being substituted here, the captain. He can't believe it. Patrick Doyle has seen enough from the Frenchman today. And so many rumours about his future. Oh, and look at that. That is disgraceful. And maybe now Sabatier is Barcelona bound. Oh, bets are off. Excuse me. Losing Danny Rawstall in a crash was a start. Transfer window hasn't helped. Clubs haven't got any money to buy players with. Dad, how could you let it happen? Oh, it's my fault, is it? You haven't exactly helped. What did I do? Jamie Parker, Robbie Walsh, ring any bells? They were my clients, now they're not. Why do you suppose that is? Dad, I'm sorry. Come here. Half the lads are still playing the gaffer's way! The midfielders you should drop back then and it was a mess! I should have done it myself! Why did I do that? Thanks to you, the fans think I'm a traitor, the lads think I'm out of order, and the gaffer... Why did you have to tell me? What are we gonna do? There is nothing we can do. We're finished. Chester have lost to their bitter rivals Birmingham City by two goals to nil and the inquests have already started amongst the players and you can see what it means to those devastated Harchester fans a lot of soul searching needed now amongst Patrick Doyle and his players they have not been at the races today it's been one of the worst performances of the season and they're now in 20th place and back in real trouble at the bottom of the Premiership table. Well played. Thank you very much. I think home advantage stood us in good stead today. But I think you'll be good enough to stay up. <laughs> no. You know how it is, Karen. There are moments that turn a season one way or the other. It feels like this is one of them. Well, I hope you're wrong. It's very nice to see you. Good luck for the Thanks, rest Karen. of the season. Nice to see you too. I must go upstairs. Bye-bye. It'll be all right. No, it won't. Let's just sit in and wait for the crowds to go. All right. I listened to people when they said that it's a fan club on a football club. Our fans are going home tonight in tears. Because of me. But it's not your fault. Yes, it is, Jackie. Just tell my face stop to it. Phil. Would you love me no matter what? Of course. Why? There's something that I need to tell you.
Coming soon on Dream Team. There are two things I cared about in this world, Jackie. Our marriage and that club. And you ruined them both. And now you've gone and opened that hysterical little mouth of yours. You probably signed our death warrant. Mr. Dog, Mr. Wallace. The boys need to know who's in charge. If you think this is the end of Patrick Doyle, then you don't know him very well. Thank you. Richard Hammond and Charlotte Hudson take science by the scruff of the neck and give it a vigorous shake tonight at nine in an explosive brainiac.